The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. Well, I had to sneeze. It was rarely that I sneeze exactly when the show starts, but that was kind of it. Well, I had a big one there. Anyway, uh, welcome again to the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more, do we go into the breach, dear friends? The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And we're off uh, three points. We got down to 24.99, and everybody bought it. Uh, volumes. Um, Kind of in line with what we've had. We're a little under 1.8 billion shares as we start the 2 o'clock show. Um, anything else really to talk about? Um, well, we'll get into it. But uh, a few things happened. And uh, I think we've got kind of uh, a slow roll at the highs in this market. Everybody still wants to go buy and buy something else, which is kind of keeping this market up. A little sector rotation. But um, I don't think there's anything in this. Um, you just never know when you wake up and the market's going to be down significantly. Uh, but uh, not a lot of signals uh, in the indexes. A lot of signals in the stocks themselves. We'll look at a few of those. And uh, in the meantime, we've got uh, kind of a quiet day here. We're going to do a little bit more news than usual. And... Uh, of course, uh, we always start that off with a little bit of history. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history repeating. On this day in 1938, without warning, a powerful Category 3 hurricane slams into Long Island and southern New England, causing 600 deaths uh, and devastating coastal uh, cities and towns. Also called the Long Island Express, the new uh, great New England hurricane of 1938 was the most destructive storm to strike the region in the 20th century. It was expected that this storm would make landfall in South Florida, and hurricane-experienced coastal citizens stocked up on supplies, boarded up their homes, and uh, Ams grade. On September 9th, though, however, the storm suddenly changed direction, began moving north, parallel to the eastern seaboard. The hurricane gained intensity as it passed into Rhode Island. Winds in excess of 120 miles an hour called uh, storm surge of 12 to 15 feet, destroying uh, coastal homes and entire fleets of boats at yacht clubs and marinas. The uh, waters of the bay surged into Providence Harbor around 5 p.m., rapidly submerging the town area of Rhode Island's capital into um, under uh, more than 13 feet of water. Many people were swept away. The hurricane then raced northward toward Massachusetts, gaining speed and again causing great flooding. In Milton, south of Boston, the Blue Hill Observatory recorded one of the highest wind gusts in history at an astounding 186 miles per hour. So those who up north who tell me that we should worry about hurricanes down here in Florida, well, eh, you just need to look at a little bit of history. It's a little bit of, uh, yeah, no satellites then, not a lot of warnings. Uh, other things that I thought were very interesting, Chicago's piling up massive amounts of debt. Um, I don't think, has anybody talked to him about Venezuela? Uh, Venezuela. Why don't you look and see how the policies in Venezuela worked out? But, of course, uh, Chicago politics means that uh, you ignore reality and uh, blaze right on with your uh, socialism that hasn't ever worked in 6,000 uh, years of recorded history. But it doesn't matter. And you wonder why five of their uh, previous governors are in jail or been in or been out. Um, corruption and just incredible stupidity. Uh, almost all of my family lives in the Chicago area. I wonder why. 
Uh, they just love taking that tax beating on a daily basis. The state co comptroller's office reported this on Tuesday, but guess what? The state is just as bad. Um, so when we talk about Puerto Rico and uh, Venezuela, I think we've got a lump Chicago and Illinois in there. Um, there is just that part of uh, socialism that everybody just can't ever get to the point of uh, saying it doesn't work. I reject your reality and insert my own. Yeah. And of course, the murder capital of the world. But uh, of course, I get lectured by that bozo that they have as a mayor there on a daily basis on TV on why we're doing everything wrong and they got it right. Well, I don't know. Emmanuel, I'm sorry. Call me back when you get rid of the murder capital of the world and you pay your bills. Okay, what else is going on out here? Uh, more on the side, I've had a lot of people ask me what's going to happen on this health care bill. But we do know some things. Uh, again, a lot of stuff going on and some of the stuff leaked and wasn't reported. Uh, but I've had an argument with uh, Andy Heck for a little while about what's going to happen in health care. Um, he's very big on thinking that the not that it's right. But the, just what's going to happen is that we're going to be pushed into single payer. I said not. Um, what we do know now is some leaked documents. Um, the Sanders view of single payer, uh, we've now found out from his uh, leaks in his campaign, uh, they tried to put it through what the CBO would have scaled it at or uh, scored it at. And what we found, uh, we now know, is that it would be $32 trillion, I'm going to say this again, $32 trillion over the next 10 years. Even his, which uh, was uh, basically wishful thinking, came in at $14 trillion over the next 10 years. That's additional money. That's not just, uh, you know, we're going to spend less somewhere else. Literally $14 trillion, and that's the very, the best that they can actually spin this thing at 14. Of course, we are uh, now in debt $20 trillion. So uh, let's, let's do is split it down the middle. This would double uh, over the next 10 years our debt. And if you think uh, that uh, healthcare is expensive now, just wait until it's free. But uh, again, uh, I have to go back to Florida down here where the, we thought that the uh, the state voted in, was it, 2003 or four or something, that we wanted to have high-speed rail between Miami, Orlando, and Tampa. And that was going to be the thing. We passed it. Everybody told us all the stuff. Then we found out it was going to be like $3 trillion to actually build it because, of course, uh, everywhere you go, you have to knock out a bunch of houses. It was going to cost almost $300 million a mile down here in Pinellas County, uh, and uh, it just eventually goes away. Unfortunately, a lot of people want to have uh, health care for everybody, a great, great thing to want to have. Uh, the question is, how do you afford it? And whether it's $32 trillion or a little less trillion E at $14 trillion, um, we're going to have to rethink this again. I don't know what happens in health care, but uh, if it's single-payer, uh, we're going to go the way of Venezuela quick. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts 
Markets is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey! Takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. And uh, that's about it. Now, uh, over the weekend, no one's talked about it much, uh, but it looks like this may be a lot closer than people have thought. Um, we've got Merkel acting a little weird over there. Could this be a, a, a Dewey versus Trump thing all over again? Uh, many are wondering, but it, apparently it looks like there's a fairly decent swing. Merkel will probably be elected but uh, in Germany. But uh, that is this, uh, this, is, uh, this Sunday. Uh, but uh, we, they may actually flip enough people in the uh, in their Congress, but I don't. They don't call it a Congress. I've been over there a couple of times. Just can't remember what it is now. Uh, something different, but uh, that's basically what it is. Uh, could swing very much over to the other side. Um, safety has been a big issue in Germany. And, of course, uh, basically the streets have become the uh, downtown of Detroit in 1968. Uh, you can't go out. Uh, you'll get attacked, killed, knocked over the head uh, in the big cities. And uh, why that's where most of our support is. A lot of people are going, eh, Merkel, your immigration policies are not for us. Uh, that is especially true in the non-big cities, the big three over there. And she may lose enough seats to make her eventually have to exit stage left. Uh, I'm not a big fan of hers, um, but uh, what can you say? I was always amazed. I tell the story occasionally. Uh, didn't really spend a lot of time going around the world. Eh, went sailing a little bit, but that was about it. And when I took my job in the 90s, I started flying around the world, started getting a little educated. And my boss, who was English and uh, was five years old when the Blitz happened in uh, England, uh, 
basically educated and told me that the Germans own 85 of eight percent of everything in Europe. And I thought, huh? He goes, they own 85 percent of everything. They own everything. They got their money and everything. They run all of Europe. This was in the 90s, much less today. Um, and I, I didn't believe him at first. And it took me several years of going over there to figure out that they could have won the war without a shot. All they had to do is buy everybody out. Um, there is a, a lot of kickback for Germany now. And the question is, uh, will they continue to not spend any money on, on – uh, the military, because they're afraid of what happened twice earlier <laughs> in the last century. But um, they've got the Russians uh, at their gate for the most part. And uh, it's going to be interesting to figure out if they're going to decide that they're going to have to give, uh, quit beating themselves for the last two world wars and uh, wake up to the fact that they better start getting a military and putting it on the east side of their country because uh, they do have a huge problem. Uh, that's about it for that. But again, if maybe a big surprise in the, not in the Politburo, but in the, uh, in the, uh, Congress, we might see a little bit of action over there. Oh, now all I got to do is find my charts. We'll do that. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know who built all the uh, bunkers in uh, Iran in the in the first and second uh, Gulf Wars? It was all Germans. <laughs> they engineered them all, and we had uh, a CIA contact actually inside the company that built them. We got all the blueprints, so we knew exactly how to blow them all up and actually how to build bombs for them. So it is kind of interesting. But, yeah, literally the Germans are into everything. Uh, let's start looking. Now, first thing is uh, NVIDIA. NVIDIA uh, last night uh, after the bell kind of took a little fall because AMD uh, was the company chosen to go with some others for self-driving cars. Uh, i.e. Tesla. And kind of interesting to see that. Of course, NVIDIA has been working with the other big car companies. I never thought that Tesla could go with NVIDIA because then their product would be exactly the same as everybody else for the most part. Um, so I never really thought that much about it. But this, uh, this little gap down, it's got some okay energy. you got a few gaps below it. Um, I actually, well, maybe we'll talk about it tomorrow in uh, the Tom O'Brien segment on his show. But uh, there's something going on. I spent out a, a, a special report on Monday stating what it was in NVIDIA. So maybe we'll bring that up tomorrow at 3.30 with Tom. But uh, e things are starting to change around NVIDIA. Does that mean this thing will instantly go lower? Uh, generally, they won't, because when people make a lot of money like this, the last thing that they ever want to do is believe that they should sell the stock. I'm not saying that you have to. I'm just saying that there's some signs out here, and we've seen these signs in other companies, and uh, we'll talk about that maybe at the 3.30 hour. Uh, take a quick look at AMD. Um Again, a lot of people are pushing, man, what's taking so long these days? Uh, come on. Are we out? Internet working? Everything there? Come on. Let's see if... Uh, what do we want to look at? AMD? Let's look at AMD. Okay. So in AMD, got a little, you know, this thing did open up a lot higher out here, but sold off and lower than yesterday's closing price. Um, it's very tough for me to say that AMD is ever really going to be able to compete on a broader level, but I do suspect that Tesla decided with these guys that they could push them around 
And uh, there's a lot to be said for that when you want to differentiate your product for someone else. Uh, somebody brought up why would Apple ever go with a single uh, manufacturer like they did with Samsung over the last couple of days. And the answer sometimes is you just don't have a choice. Uh, but uh, normally if you go with a smaller guy and you're a big company, you have a lot of effect in the way that they do things and the way that you want them to be done. It may not be the best way for them to have uh, a huge market. But uh, it, this is kind of one of the tail wagging the dogs kind of thing. But I think more than anything, it's interesting to see that this thing opened higher, rolled over, and uh, it and uh, both uh, NVIDIA are both lower. And, of course, when we look at uh, some of the other stocks in the Apple supply chain, let's we'll start off with Apple. It's still down. Uh, a, 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 yeah, AAPL. Take a quick look at that. Uh, yep. Good example. Somebody in the den brought up a company that was making sapphire crystals that it run, that, that Apple ran broke. We'll talk about Apple when, it can, when it's back. It has come back into this gap. Volume's fairly low. We'll talk about that in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
a lot of people are just uh, kind of scratching their head, wondering how far Apple will fall, and it will probably continue to fall until they quit doing stupid things. Shipping a product that doesn't work, knowing it doesn't work and shipping it anyway, can only be, I guess your fanboys are going to buy it? I don't know. Anyway, uh, we'll talk about that tomorrow also, I think, with Tom O'Brien, but not a good thing to ship a product that's broken and you know it, and you ship it anyway. Um, it's not that necessary. I imagine you could probably use an old iWatch since it's not that different than the new iWatch, uh, but uh, they're going to ship it anyway. So a little lower stock price today. So now let's go over and check some of the other Skox SWKS. And of course, uh, we talked about this for a while. Um, this one kind of broke out of a triangle to the upside, rotated back down, had a huge day down yesterday with three and a half million shares. Today, just 1.2 million shares, but certainly going to probably get into this 99.11 low from August 29th. Uh, then we want to look at, of course, the other ones, which is Avago. This is the old Broadcom, by the way. If you're if you lost this, this is like Broadcom and RF micro devices. This is kind of uh, kind of the sloppy Joe of uh, also rands that got together. Uh, but they do have products that people buy and put on smartphones. Um, but again, these are the uh, these are the guys that are making the modem chip that Samsung and of course Qualcomm are saying is uh, crap. Uh, but again, not uh, slowing Apple down at all. They got into that uh, peeing war with uh, Qualcomm over their chips. And I think they're going to uh, draw the uh, short straw on this one. But we'll see. Again, this one was down fairly strong. Still down uh, off the close yesterday, 1.8 million shares compared to 4.5 million shares. Uh, when we look at the SMHs, of course, uh, as I said, uh, with both... AMD now lower and NVIDIA lower. It's not that much. Everybody's going to try to buy something else. Uh, you don't have a lot of volume so far, but my guess is that you're probably going to see a lot of people think that they can buy NVIDIA, but uh, it's in pretty rarefied air. And we'll, eh, we'll talk about that tomorrow. But um, I think you've got a pretty good signal here. As we said yesterday, this may be one of the most perfect Gartley uh, butterfly patterns out here. And the reason why is there are a lot of butterfly patterns. Tom calls it uh, in his book about uh, the, the volume we want to Tiger Gartley. And I have kind of the same thing. I just you look at the X to A and compare that to the C to D leg and look at the energy on my power law vector indicator. Well, it was 3.7 on the way down from the X to A, it was 2.9 on the way up. You had a doji, actually, uh, thought it was going to fail just the next day, but it took eh, a day or two to actually roll over at these highs. But just about the perfect one, if you want to go back and study one um, and get Tom's book, uh, I think this is kind of what you want to look at. Uh, the only thing that you would like to see in this one that maybe is not textbook is that the ratio from the A to C point off the B point, I'd like to have see it a little bit weaker out here. It wasn't, but that's not uncommon with uh, high flyers and anything in tech that seems to get a lot of people uh, kind of in that uh, mood that auctioneers give, which is, you know, you, you just, you know, you, they want to keep you going. They talk like that to, uh, to uh, overwhelm your better, the better angels of your nature. And we can look at that. Uh, doo -doo -doo. What else do we have? Okay. Take a look. Take a quick look at IBM. We haven't looked at that one for a while. And what do we got? I don't know why I'm continually having issues uh, with slow internet, but I am. Okay, well, this thing hasn't been able to do anything for the last four or five days, has it? Not that the market has anything done anything other than that. Uh, yesterday, you were up a little bit, volume uh, 5.4 million shares. Today is 1.3.
So maybe just a little market gas out here. I don't see anything. I kind of like looking at the weak stocks. So we can look at that. Uh, you can, of course, email me at path at tfnn.com. You can email me uh, at path at tfnn.com. Call me at 877-927-6648 or post a message in the den. Uh, yeah, IBM is so 70s. Okay, what else do I want to look at? Uh, Facebook, the CEO is getting beaten uh, for selling Russian advertising during the election. Um, some pretty scathing stuff from the uh, West Coast, who normally uh, like to give uh, Mr. Zuckerberg a big bear hug. Well, Comrade Zuckerberg is not getting all the uh, love from the extreme far left that he thought. Some very uh, risque cartoons about him doing that. Doesn't seem to have done anything for the stock, though. It just continues to go sideways. But we're going to have a low-volume doji here today. If this thing's probably going to start dropping, my guess is it will be tomorrow if this is going to show some weaknesses. Uh, Amazon, oh, if I can actually type it correctly. A-M-Z-N. Uh, getting in everybody's business. And it just doesn't seem to stop. Uh, what is most interesting to me is the energy off this uh, 1,000 is actually already stronger than the August 29th up to this September 13th high. So when we're looking at, at, at the juice between the swing highs, You've already had a down leg without even testing the previous low that is much stronger than that August 29th to 1,000 high. My thought is that a lot of people are getting very nervous about a lot of the action that Amazon's doing and is waiting for them to get sued for antitrust. They literally are not getting, in, uh, getting into every single business that they think they can. And probably you got to do it while the uh, iron's hot because when the government comes in and shuts you down, your lawyers are probably going to tell you, you know, if you're walking on eggs, don't hop. Um, and I think this is the poster child for antitrust. I'm just wondering when that's actually going to get uh, dropped on them. Uh, pretty easy to make a case that they've been involved in antitrust and anti-competitive actions before, from fixing the price of books uh, to a variety of other things that they've been fined with over the time, you can make a pa an argument for a pattern of behavior uh, on that. And so I think you're probably, not that the stock couldn't go higher, but I think a lot of people are kind of scratching their head going, you know, when they get into business X, is that when the government's going to drop the uh, hammer on them for antitrust? I think that's starting. I'm seeing a lot more articles. We'll be back after this. trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights tom o'brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m and provides tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the dow nasdaq and s p plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. If you're looking to open your portfolio to a world of opportunity, consider the new market-safe emerging currency CD from EverBank. This three-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD gives you exposure to five equally weighted currencies from Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, and Turkey at a time when experts see great potential for global growth. Even better, it features a 7.0 leverage factor, which means you could earn a potential market upside payment of seven times the CD's performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected.
Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. The September 28th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. EverBank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile scanner plus right at tfnn.com and when you sign up you gain instant access to john logan's most recent webinar how price volume and time make market profile so unique this hour-long webinar with john logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader you pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free for more information on the taz profile scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And uh, yeah, very interesting stuff going on out here. But eventually, they'll go a bridge too far. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, you get so big, then everybody goes up against you. But uh, yeah, a lot of interesting stuff going on. Uh, market's kind of quiet, but uh, very interesting stuff. I think we've uh, a lot of people not paying attention to the news today, the last few days. I thought probably the most interesting thing in the news, other than the FOMC announcement, was that uh, there was a, uh, uh, a woman in the uh, UN who was going after all her political enemies using the uh, uh, unmasking them with the NSA. Uh, she did one a day. And uh, I think maybe we're seeing, uh, when I th saw that news, I thought, you know what, maybe this is Watergate. But, of course, uh, that was all through the political election of last year. Uh, using the NSA to bug your political opponent, much better than having somebody break into an office. But uh, eh, what can you say? But my guess is that is going to be the theme of congressional investigations this fall, although uh, everybody's done as much as they can to ignore it up to this point. I think it is going to eventually break out. Uh, so heinous is the action on that. We're at uh, 25.03 on the S&P cash volume is 1.9 billion shares. You can call me at 877-927-6648. Tell me I'm all wet. Ask me for my opinion on a stock. You, know, you can do just about anything. We want to check back in. Uh, we had an email looking at here at Seagate. Uh, the question is going to be what's going on here. And again, this is a stock that truly looks to me like the old uh, old three-gap play. And when you get these, um, you really want to look at them hard because uh, this is the kind of thing that you trade you don't recover from in a year. Uh, they just, the bottom opens up and you get caught and you do the wrong thing and it even gets worse. But uh, Seagate Technology had its first gap here uh, on the 26th of uh, April. The next one came in, of course, on the uh, 25th of July. And I had, I don't know, five or 10 people ask me for the white paper uh, that I've done on these three gap plays. You can certainly get it. Just email me and ask at path at tfnn.com. But if you're um, playing the home game, and you've read my white paper on this, this is one you want to start looking at, because uh, guess what? <laughs> I'm going to say that there's an 80% chance you get a third gap, and it's just as big as this one. 
Um, this thing really hasn't even been able to recover so much. Never recovered from the first one. Hasn't really recovered from the second one. And my guess is that you are going to get a third one of equal size. That was uh, 40 bucks to 34, so six bucks. Um, and this, you know, this one kind of sled. You had some small ones, but uh, yeah, three gap play, at least for the ones I've gone back and looked at, are these giant, huge, gaping gaps. And uh, these things tend to about 80% of the time, you get two of them like this, you're going to get the third one out there. Um, da, 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 yeah, I think there's enough fear in both Apple and Amazon uh, to keep a lid on them. I don't know if I'd be short either one of them. Uh, I think that there's a uh, lower hanging fruit. Uh, we are kind of sliding in this hour. Uh, 2501 on the S&P cash volume is still a little under 2 billion shares. So it is kind of uh, rolled off a little bit. It was a discussion earlier in the den about whether or not for the Jewish holiday, uh, if it actually even matters anymore. And my thought was that it probably doesn't. Uh, we brought this up a few times on the show, but in 2001, Goldman Sachs had 600 equity traders. They now have two equity traders and 200 programmers that uh, service those two best traders. They kind of did a uh, war. Uh, and the best, you know, the people that didn't do well every year got canned and they kept it. And uh, even uh, back into 2012, you still had some 200 traders. Uh, that's gone down to literally two, and all they do is make sure that the machines don't do something incredibly stupid. So they sit there and watch what the computer tells them, and they may not agree with it, but as long as it's not incredibly stupid, they don't veto the machine, and the machine just crunches away. So uh, maybe we'll have a little lighter volume. Uh, maybe a lot of those guys that were in the business now have their own hedge funds, and maybe they trade a bit. So maybe you can make a case that it is going to be lighter volume, but probably not the kind of light volume that we saw back in the uh, in the early 2000s when I was really learning to trade. Um, but uh, we'll see. Uh, I still think that the market's rolling over, and in the next seven or so days, I think we can see uh, 80 points down or 20 points high, uh, higher, both of those with equal uh, – Outcomes 50 50. Uh, I am leaning toward the side that says that we are going lower, and it may just take a little while. Uh, I did post a quote in the den earlier, and it's one of the better ones out here from Jesse Livermore. In fact, let me go ahead and pull it up because a lot of people haven't been through market highs that are more traditional. They've all been in these things that have been, you know, huge fireworks. Normally, big long-term highs do not actually uh, occur that way. They actually tend to be a lot more subtle because if you're subtle, you can keep all those people in at the highs. That's the trick to making a long-term market high. Um, you've got to keep those guys in the boat for a while. You've got to, the old story about boiling a frog, if you throw him into hot water, he'll jump out of the pot. But if you throw him into lukewarm water and slowly turn the temperature up, eventually you'll have a boiled frog. Well, that's kind of what needs to happen. When you've seen the big bone-crushing uh, uh, pullbacks in the past, uh, they weren't, there wasn't a day that you could have walked into the 1929 uh, crash before it happened and said, you know what, there's a definite sign that this is going to break tomorrow. It took two or three weeks. And uh, if you ever read the uh, writings of Jesse Livermore and Wyckoff and some of the other guys, um, it went on for about six, eight weeks uh, while they were adding short positions and getting stopped out. But when it did finally break, um, nobody was there to short it. They were basically in the positions to do it, and that was it. But here's his quote. And there's another thing to remember, and that is that a market does not culminate in one grand, grand uh, blaze of glory. Neither does it end with a sudden reversal of form. Uh, Long-term highs, not saying that this is it, but long-term highs, if you think maybe this is it, 
don't happen overnight. They test you repeatedly. And the hardest thing in the world, I can tell you the hardest thing in the world for me to do was short a bunch of financials in 2008. Even though the chart tells you it's incredibly tough to pull that trigger. If it's easy, it probably isn't worth it. If it's tough, if it, if it hits you, this is what makes me think that we could have a bigger downside. It's just how tough it is to stay short here. We'll be back in a minute. Tom O'Brien has just announced that he'll be coming to Boston September 30th for a free workshop, The Art of Timing the Trade. Join Tom O'Brien Saturday morning, September 30th at the Boston Marriott in Burlington, Massachusetts, as he breaks down his trading methodology and provides you with the tools to become a more successful and profitable trader. Everyone that attends in person will receive a free signed copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. Daryl Martin from Apex Investing Institute will also be presenting for 90 minutes at this free event. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. Join me in Boston on September 30th as I return to my hometown for a workshop about the art of timing the trade. I look forward to seeing all the tigers and tigresses for this special free event. All action starts early at 7.30 a.m. with a continental breakfast and wraps up at about 1 p.m. Topics that Tom will be covering during his presentation include quality volume, cause and effect, ABC structures, swing points, and much, much more. For all the information on this free Boston event taking place Saturday, September 30th, visit the front page of TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits and the Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. Come join me next hour as we bisect and dissect these markets right here on TFNN. Wow! And, uh, oh, I forgot, and I got an email here. Uh, we, we were talking yesterday about what happened in 20, uh, 2004 and five. There's always a tipping point, and I said something majorly changed back there in 2004, 2005 in technology. And a lot of people, uh, it's kind of hard to think about. But there is kind of a tipping point, and the only reason I'm saying this now is because I think that there's kind of a tipping point in the markets coming, uh, and it, a lot of times it's gradual. Uh, we brought it up in a, a couple of things, uh, the flood and hurricane uh, in, uh, in uh, the Far East and the hard drives, um, uh, some of the big tipping points when China was trying to uh, uh, corner the market on rare earths and MCP came along. There's a few times where you're going to make a lot of money if you can sit there and be right and sit on your hands. Um, 
but uh, a lot of times you look at these things, you really don't know it. 2004, China's tried to uh, monopolize uh, the phosphors that went in tube TVs and monitors for computers. And at that time, I had bought, I think a year or two before that, 2002 or three, I'd bought some of the new Sony LCD monitors, two of them at a thousand bucks a piece. And so I had some LCDs in there, but I'm staring at them all day. I didn't bother thinking much about them. But I think they were 20 inches. I think they were a grand a piece. Uh, but what happened is by cutting down the amount uh, of uh, phosphors available for those tubes, they opened up a huge new business in LCDs and kind of killed off their business in phosphors. That business went to... Uh, the the uh, mountain pass uh, mines here in the United States for all the new uh, rare earths that went into a lot of LCDs for a year. Of course, China has once again kind of monopolized that business. But uh, people have asked me about why Apple is doing all this uh, OLED stuff down in Austin. It's again because rare earths. We'll talk more about this maybe tomorrow with Tom O'Brien. But there is a, med, a method to their madness. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we will see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.